Matter of fact, look at that same person and say, bro, you look good anyhow. As long as you've got God, as long as you have light, God has something for you. I'm not going to tell you exactly what that is because you and God have to work that out. But what I do want to affirm is that God isn't finished with you until the moment he takes you home. He's not finished with you until you go home, Master. God has been preparing you for today's task your whole life long. He's been preparing just an habit for this task. Whatever it is that I'm about to accomplish, he's been preparing me for this task. And he is ready and I'm ready. In many ways, Caleb was the perfect person to lead the fight against the giant. He had the most experience. He had seen the most battles. He had spent 45 years waiting for this opportunity. Reminds me that whatever we face today, God has been preparing us for it. God's been preparing us for it. Hallelujah. You were destined to do something great. I say you were destined to do something great. There's no way you can be attached to God and not be destined to do something great. Oh, uh, y'all remember, he is able to do it to you, but do of all that you could ever ask or think according to the power that working inside of you. Stop letting people put you down. Hallelujah. They try to put you down, climb on top of them. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Make your way to the top. That's why we need to know our purpose as early as possible. I take comfort from this. I, I draw strength from the realization that whatever hurdles I face, God has been preparing me and equipping me to meet. He's in control. He knows what he's doing. And he will walk with me to handle the situations of life that I face. It's always difficult in the midst of challenging situations to see how God has been preparing us for that situation. And then later to see how the situation prepares us for the next challenge in life. Has anybody notice that? That every time that you go through something, it prepares you for the next thing? In other words, God brought you to that so he can prepare you to be able to go to the next level so that you will be able to defeat all of the things that you're coming against. And that's why I like to talk about how God is in control. He's the manager of the universe. Oh, yes, he is. And now I know that he's good. It gives me, listen, it gives me strength. It gives me hope. It gives me the ability to try to relax in God's promises. See, you might have to wait 40 years to see God's promises, but if you'll wait on the Lord, he will renew your strength. I say wait, my brother. I say wait, my sister. Oh, you don't have to throw in the towel. You don't have to give up. You don't have to give in. You just have to wait. And even then, you might have to get in and fight for it. Caleb wanted, he waited 45 years to experience the promise of God come true in his life. And we know from the story that he never forgot the word that God said to him through Moses. And that when the time was right, he stepped forward to claim the promise. I believe the time is right. I believe the time is right. Ah, the time was right for us to be able to step forward. And that's why y'all are sitting in this building today. The time was right. And that's what God did. God brought us to this place. Do you have that patience to wait for God's timing to keep his promises? See, God is not finished with me yet. He told me 30 years ago that if I trusted him, if I launched out into the deep, that he would give me some big fish. I, I love how Caleb was acting in place the promise of God, and I'm challenged by it. I don't know about you, but I often want to claim the promises of God, things that just show up in my life without any effort on my part. Caleb models for us the opposite approach to claim the promises of God by acting like there is nothing that will stand in the way of God from keeping those promises that he has made in your life. I'm not talking about somebody just speaking something over you they don't know what they're talking about. I'm talking about those who have spoken the word of I said on yesterday as I was teaching and as I was speaking to these men, I said, you got to hear God's voice and you got to know what God's voice is saying. You got to know what God's voice is saying and you cannot know God's voice if you do not pray. See, all that mattered to Peter was that God had made a promise. He wasn't listening to Joshua. He wasn't listening to Moses. He was listening to the voice of God. So Peter grabbed the sword and hit it off to the hills to defeat the enemy. And Merle, this is a great faith. This is this is great faith to act on the promise of God before we see evidence of the fulfillment. Act on the promises of God. You gotta see it before you see it. Oh my God, hallelujah. Oh my God. God has promised you some things, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do what he told me to do. For example, God promised that those who seek him will what? Find him. 
We promise that when we have opportunity to share our faith, if we simply open up our mouths, the Spirit will put the words of our mouths upon our lips, or our, His words upon our lips. He promised to teach us the truth and set us free by that same truth. He, he, sometimes the promises appear instantly without any action on our part. But more often than I, I believe that we have, a, have to act in faith in order to see the fullness of God's promises in our lives. And like Caleb, we have to march off into the battle. If we're going to claim the promises, if we're going to claim the promises of victory, we got to march off toward the battle. Before we get there, we've we got to have our swords drawn. We got to be ready to do battle against the enemy. And when we look at the end of the story with Joshua and Joshua, you might be wondering how this battle turned out. Well, we read in the answers, the answers over there in Genesis, I mean, in Joshua 15, verses 13 through 17, God was faithful. After 45 years and with a soldier who was 85 years old, the giants were destroyed. I'm telling you, the giants were destroyed. The giants were destroyed. What I think happens is that so many times is that we look at our abilities. We look at what we can accomplish. We look at our weapons. Caleb did not want to go into spiritual retirement. At age 85, give me this hill country that the Lord promised me. You yourself heard that the Anakites were there and their cities were large and fortified, but the Lord's helping me. Now I'm driving out, just as he said. So when the people around you, when your brothers, your sisters around you are listening to you talk about what God has promised you and they're talking negativity, Dismiss yourself. They ain't going nowhere but back in the wilderness. They ain't going nowhere but back in the back. Listen, they are going to be lost. The righteous will still bear fruit. Uh, let me give you where the scripture is. It's in Psalm 94, 92, 14. The righteous will still bear fruit in old age. Mm. This is what he's, this is the word of God. Old age doesn't mean the end of spiritual battles and victories. Caleb wasn't looking for a life of ease. He was ready to fight. The New Testament contains some very important instruction of elderly men and women. And the church needs godly men and godly women. Listen, serving the Lord in their latter years. Men and women that will finish well. Come on, they say finish well. Yeah. Some of your neighbors say, you, you need to finish well. Yeah. Tell them, stop dragging. Or tell them, stop dragging. Stop procrastinating. Get on with the battle. Caleb followed the Lord in the wilderness and he continued to follow the Lord in the land of Canaan 45 years later. His children defeated the Anakins, settled in the land that God had promised to him. He finished well. It's a shame when a person doesn't finish well. Fortunately, spiritual success doesn't depend on physical condition. You can serve the Lord and others on any condition, in any condition, even on a sick bed. My brother's been experiencing some sickness. And I go to his house. Um, <laughs> I was talking to him just like he hadn't been sick. And the reason I could do it was because I'm here today because of him. So I started talking to him and before I realized I mean, he was raging, rearing up, <laughs> flexing. And I said, man, look, can't go where you're at. Just come on down here and join us. Just come on down here and join us. You don't have to go into those situations. Listen, you've you got to finish well. you got to finish well. See, we can be an example of encouragement to others. The Apostle Paul says, finish well. See, God wants to faith which was powers in youth to be undimmed in old age. We got to make it to the end. We got to make it to the end. Hallelujah. What's that song? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to make it to the end. I can't remember what the song is. I'm bad with songs. I'm bad with songs. Go ahead, take a laugh. I'll take a break. Anyway. <laughs> But, but the vision of the Lord shall be clearer as we grow older. I believe that. The vision of the Lord will become clear as we grow older. That, you know, and that's when life's journey is almost done. I mean, we shall not be content merely to survey the past. Okay? 